For those of you who do not know me, I am Kim Sullivan. I'm the Executive Director of Love in the Name of Christ. And And you know, lately I've been thinking a lot about both the beginning and the origin of the church, as well as what the church will look like in the last days. I've been reading the book of Revelations, where it warns the, the church of Ephesus that they must return to their first love. And consequently, they must return to their first works. I believe that Lola's testimony really portrays how love in the name of Christ is a ministry of first works. You know, first of all, Love Inc. equips volunteers to reach out to the community. One of the most unexpected blessings of my job as an executive director is getting to observe our volunteers growing personally. Lola mentioned her growth in uh, interpreting and that how her volunteering helped her hone in on her skills for interpreting so that now she has a job interpreting uh, in hospitals. She also had a lifelong dream to minister to Muslims who are Arabic speaking. And because of her service and volunteering in love in the name of Christ, she is able to reach out to those who are needing to hear about Jesus. Another one of our volunteers, Connie, had never prayed out loud in her whole entire life when she first came to us five years ago. Now she's one of the most requested intake volunteers when clients call because they just love to pray with Connie. Linda's one of our newest receptionists. And when she first came to us, she had just pushed through a severe case of agor agoraphobia. Each week she chooses to overcome the anxiety that she experiences just opening her front door and leaving her home to be the first kind voice that clients hear when they call our offices for help. The disciples also needed help in ministry. In Acts chapter 6, verse 2, the disciples chose and trained people to wait on tables in order to meet needs in the community. The pastors of our partner churches can't do it all. In fact, the pastors of our partner churches shouldn't do it all. It's not their job to meet the needs of the people in the community. Quite frankly, it's ours. It's one of the things that we as Christ followers have been called to do from the very beginning. And now we're called to do it again. The second thing that I think that Lola's testimony tells us about, about Love Inc. being a first works ministry is that Love Inc. takes care of the needs of both the body of Christ and those in our community. In fact, last year we were able to mobilize church volunteers to meet 720 needs in the greater Tinley Park area. This year, we hope to reach 1,000 needs met as we add more churches, train new volunteers, and increase the collective workforce of the body of Christ throughout our territory. Just like the great revivalist and founder of the Salvation Army once stated, soup, soap, and salvation. It's harder to hear even good news when you have an empty stomach. It's harder to get employment when you don't have soap and shampoo to take a proper shower. We believe that by meeting a need, that we are actually planting a seed, a seed of relationship between those who are believers and those who have yet to experience the love of Christ in a tangible and practical way. Loving churches are able to do this and are doing this right now by providing personal care items, coats, bedding, and beds, among other things. Even deeper relationships are made through classes like What on Earth Am I Here For? The Story of Marriage that Lola mentioned, Budgeting, Jobs for Life that Lola also mentioned, and just recently, a Crock-Pot cooking class. Acts 2.45 says they sold property and possessions to give to all who were in need. Meeting needs in the community is one of the first works of the church. And if we want to return to our first love, we're called to 
do it again. The third way that I see Lola's testimony showing that Loving is a first works ministry is that Loving promotes unity in the Christian church. You know, we have 19 partner churches within our fellowship. And all of our partner churches have a different part in reaching out to the community. Lola didn't list all of the churches that has reached out to the Arabic community and to the other people who are in need throughout the greater Tinley Park area. You know, out of town relatives and the rest of the nation, they look at Chicago and they see our city as corrupted, divided, and violent. You know, the book of Daniel talks about spirits being over geographical regions. And we have to be very careful not to allow these spirits of corruption, division, and violence to enter into our churches. But the very first act of the church was to be in one place, with one mind, with one spirit, much like we've been to this evening. If there's anything evident about the encouragement to the churches in Revelation, it's that they are not to be monuments, but they're to be a movement. And they're not supposed to be concentrating on a building, but on a people. The church is referred to in regional sections of Revelations, not just as individual institutions. Our city was once known as a city of innovation. Back in the day, we hosted a world's fair full of new ideas. Some considered us to be the city of origin for the modern day skyscraper. Yet even this distinction did not come without obstacles. After the Chicago fire, we did not relent, we rebuilt. And now we have one of the most recognizable skylines in the whole world. We do not have to sit in the ashes of what the enemy has tried to do to our city and to our region. The church has been built on the foundation of Jesus and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. After the great fire, the city of Chicago was also known as a city of revival. With the likes of D.L. Moody, Billy Sunday, Dowie and Lake, Almost every recorded revival has been soaked in prayer and reached across de denominations, but also has been covered with first works. If God helped our city in the past to rise up out of the ashes of destruction and to become instead a light in the darkness, he will help us do it again. Yeah. Loving is not called to the work to do the work for the church, but to inspire and to equip the church to be the church and to do what she has been created and commanded to complete before the beginning of time. Our passion is to put God on display by fanning the flames of relational revival, allowing the church to fulfill her ancient call, the call of the first works. Let the battle cry of our relational revival be to do it again. Yes. God bless you. Thank you.